As working moms, so many of us are juggling so many things and we know that we can handle it all or we think we can handle it all and sometimes we just keep taking on more. But when is more too much? You've got to know and I got to the point where I was doing way too much and it took me way too long to figure it out and I'm going to explain why in this episode of My Working Mom Journey. I'm Mocha Mom, welcome to Working Mom Warrior, where we help you stop the stress and dump the self-judgment by relating to stories of other moms who share their successes and their failures. In my Working Mom journey, in this episode, I'm going to explain to you how I let my business not just take over my life and consume me with worry and guilt about our finances, but actually have an impact on my health and my mothering in a way that I never anticipated or even realized at the time. We were buying properties that needed work and were discounted and you know foreclosures or whatever or state sales um, but I kind of went a little crazy because I'm the kind of person that sometimes when I get involved in something I get a lot of energy towards it you might be able to tell that and I ended up like getting nine properties in the course of the next couple years and 11 mortgages to go with them and basically like all of them were purchased with no money that we had it was just all borrowed money they call that leveraged so these properties were basically leveraged to 100% so for instance if you bought a house for 150,000 and the loans that you got maybe one loan here another loan here another loan here, here added up to 150,000 there was no equity in the house but if the if the total of those loan payments was 1200 and the tenant was paying 1400 then your loans were going to be paid and you didn't have to worry and you had a couple hundred dollars extra when there were repairs that came up so that's the way I thought it was going to work but a couple things happened number one I was naive well many things happened um, about how much time this would take and how financially this would all really work. And I know some people might say, well, the loan officer should have checked that you had enough reserves and all that, but nobody was doing that then. And I'm not blaming anybody else. And I'm not saying people who um, did get into some of these subprime mortgages, it was their fault, or I'm not saying it was the loan officer's fault. You know, there were millions of people that were affected by the crash and, and by the, you know, the economy. But I was definitely one of them. So so, but the biggest impact that it had on my life, um, while the financial was just crushing, the time element was was worse. Was much harder on my psyche and my my ability to emotionally manage when my work life balance became off. So when you suddenly go from having like this one little rental property and then maybe two and then three and then all of a sudden you have like six and then seven. It's way more time and effort, especially when you haven't been doing it a long time and you don't know and, and you're dealing with inspectors and appraisals and trying to refinance and putting all kinds of repairs on credit cards because you think you're going to be able to refinance and pay off the card with the teaser rate and I don't even want to go into all that. That's a whole separate story of the mess that ensued and, and what it caused though was every single day from the moment I woke up instead of thinking about oh what am I gonna do with my kids today just getting them off to school you know as quick as possible while I'm answering a million calls and 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 a million emails and dealing with the crisis of the day the tenth crisis of the day and oh, what a relief they're at school and oh no Tomorrow is the Girl Scout meeting and I haven't even started preparing for that and I had people telling me you got to drop all this stuff because I was staying up, I was hardly sleeping, I, I, in order to manage all this stuff I was just overwhelmed. My husband was trying to help but he really wasn't involved in the property. I'm kind of a control freak and he didn't really know all the things I knew. He hadn't listened to all these books, he hadn't read all these things, he wasn't involved you know and he had his own work and he you know his job was starting to um, transition and he was worried about that so he had his own stresses and I was taking all this on and so my work-life balance got way out of whack basically what I did was I created 
like a full-time plus job for myself that was supposed to just be a couple of little rental houses that weren't really making any money but would help us someday in retirement, right? Like 25, 30 years down the road, they'd be paid off and then we could collect the rent, you know, without a mortgage and that would help us when we were retired. That was really kind of the whole idea in the beginning. And then this no money down fills you with all these notions of, oh, well, you know, I do need extra money because someday we want a bigger house for the kids and, and the kids are going to get more expensive as they get older and they want piano lessons and, you know, and then we're going to need to set up a 529 college plan and so we need this extra money and, you know, right now I've been putting the kids in hand-me-down clothes but maybe someday I want to go out and buy them new clothes, you know, so, you know, you get into this, you fall into this trap of, well, we need this extra money and this can help us get it. Well, first of all, I was naive about that. You know, leveraging a property to the max, you're not going to be making a whole lot of extra money. Um, any extra that you make is going to go into the repairs and what I found out, even though I felt like everyone kept saying, aren't you scared about the risk? I said, well, you know, what am I risking if I, if, if we didn't have to put in any money, you know, but the problem is that sometimes the properties cost more than even the rent is collecting, although it may be paying the mortgage, if if all of a sudden an inspector asks you to do $3,000 worth of repairs, you're like, where am I going to get that money? And that's when, and I had great credit, I started leaning on all these credit cards. So it's a big mess. I don't want to go into all of it here. This is more about my motherhood journey, but suffice it to say that I was no longer working two days a week, which was actually 26 hours when I was working two days a week, because counting my commute, it was 13 hours each time I did that. So I was working more like 70, 80 hours a week, but still doing all the things that I wanted to do as part of the motherhood that I wanted for myself and my kids. And so I had people saying, you know, drop the Girl Scout troop, stop doing this. But I'm like, but those are the th only things that are giving me joy. The time I spend with my kids, the time when I'm working, the you know the time when I'm doing these activities with my kids and other kids those are the things when I'm not stressed but all this real estate starting this side business it was never a passion of mine it wasn't something I felt I always wanted to do this I loved it I didn't hate it in the beginning it was a great challenge but then after a while I did it because I felt like I had to have this extra money and my husband's you know company was paying him less and less and cutting his hours more and more and we now we really need this money and I felt I had to do it that's bad when you get to the point in your work working mom life where you're feeling like I have to do this I have to go to the PTA meeting though I hate it because the moms will glare at me if I don't stop I have to have this full-time job I have to have it or 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 we can't pay our bills I understand that but maybe just maybe you've got to get yourself together and find a way to work from home full time if it means it'll save your sanity or even lean into some other resources temporarily for a short time. Okay, I'm going crazy. I'm having emotional struggles. I'm having health issues because I can't manage this all. Maybe you take a little time off, lean on, on others, some other resources. There's, there's always things out there that can help you through it. And then when you get back on your feet, um, then you go back to full time when you feel you're in a better place. I, I know there are people that, you know, and of course any mom is going to do that if you have to do that, if, you know, in order to make sure you keep a roof over your head and food on the table for your kids. But there's so many of us that feel like, okay, we have to have this extra money because we have to have the college fund for the kids. We have to have enough money to buy them school clothes and shoes. You don't have to. You have to make sure they're safe and they're happy and they're not happy if you're not happy. I was yelling at my kids all the time. I was stressed out constantly. I was working too much. I wasn't sleeping. I was practically falling asleep when I was driving. I got pulled over and the cop thought I was drunk. I was drifting. I didn't even know it. I was exhausted. That's dangerous. It was dangerous for my health. I was starting to have like these like heart palpitations. I went to the doctor. She did all these tests and then she started asking me when they were occurring. Well, they always happen on Tuesdays. She's like, what do you do on Tuesdays? You know, pay the bills and, and it's the day that I spend all day and night doing dealing with nothing but real estate, you know? And she's like, this is stress related. You can feel actual pain from stress, yes. That was another awakening I had. I'm like, you know, and I'm smart about a lot of things. And I know stress can cause, you know, health problems, but I didn't think you could feel actual pain that's caused specifically by stress. And eventually, yes, it will impact your, your um, actual, the readings that I'm taking that right now show that you're healthy. 
So I knew something had to change. And in the meantime, because I was trying to do all these things and wasn't able to do it, my sleep was falling by the wayside and I wasn't taking care of my house the way I wanted. And I mean, it wasn't just um, a mess like a lot of mom's houses are. It was um, like a, a clutter catastrophe. It, I had become like, n not a hoarder, but I couldn't manage all the paperwork. And so I, I would, I would create a box and some files here and then another one and then another one and pretty soon all over the whole house and so I I have a whole speech that I give to groups sometimes explaining sort of what I went through and how I realized it and how I came out of it and um, so but this is part of my motherhood journey so my in my motherhood journey I realized that I wasn't being the kind of mom I wanted to to my kids because I was stressed out all the time I was yelling all the time I was trying to do too much I wasn't reaching out for help enough I wasn't willing to let go so I had to let go of some things once you've recognized and come to grips with the fact that things aren't the way they should be it's great to finally be able to take some steps towards improving things and working on changing something so that you know you can be a better mom and a better professional and a better woman and feel better about yourself in the future. I explain that, how I got to that point in my next episode of My Working Mom Journey. And don't forget to spread a little of your own love to another mom who needs it.